The Green Machine, my 356, is running pretty well, and I had done most of the tune-up process on the engine test stand, but I never released that video. It's been a while now. But I want to continue the process of synchronizing the carburetors with it off idle and a few other tricks I do, driving, measuring the uh, air fuel ratio, a couple things like that. I'm not saying my tune-up procedure is the best. It's different than most. Stay tuned. This is the Porsche 356 tune-up episode with Solex 40 P11s. Before I go right into procedures, I thought I should explain what the engine is. This is an engine that I built myself years ago before I took the whole car apart and did rust repair and paint and everything. It is a 1720 with Shasta pistons. Uh, they are 9.1 or 9.2, I think it's set up at 9.1 compression ratio. And it has a modified cam. It's the Norris 331S, I believe little bit uh, stronger than the SC cam, which this car is. It has the stock distributor, which is the Bosch 022. The carburetors are also the stock carburetors. These have been modified a little bit only to fix the throttle shaft bores and convert them to solid shaft. These are normally the split shaft on, actually these carburetors are from a 912, but they are modified a little bit bigger than 40 millimeters just to take out all the play in the shafts. So the tune-up procedure is mostly the same. We might see some small differences due to the engine being slightly bigger with different cams. And that's why I go the extra mile to measure more stuff. But that's the engine. It's in good condition. Any tune-up procedure will have you begin with adjusting the valves, making sure your engine is in good condition. The leak down numbers on this engine are less than 5%. They're actually more like 2%. Leak down's really good on this engine. The valves are adjusted at 6 thousandths intake and exhaust, and that's the way I like to do it. Um, some people set the intakes at four or the exhaust at eight or something like that. I just do everything at six. So while the engine was on the test stand, I set the timing. Make sure the dwell was correct, 50 degrees, plus minus a few. The fuel pressure is too high. It's at 3.6. The max is 3.5, so it's a little bit too high. So I'll show you how to fix that. To change the fuel pressure on a mechanical fuel pump, you gotta basically uh, shim the fuel pump out just a little bit with a gasket. So I'm gonna make a gasket and uh, put that in. I looked through my box of gaskets and the old closest thing I could find is this carburetor gasket, but I don't have the exact right one. This is the shape I need. This is the fuel pump spacer. So I'm just gonna trace this on to some uh, stock. I have some, some gasket stock and we'll just get it done real quick. That's perfect. This side has definitely got a problem because it's over filling the sight glass. It's actually coming out over the top. The float level is way too high on this side. The adjustment is all the way in. And I'm starting to see, see how it's leaking into the carburetor? That's bad. So I'm gonna quickly drain the fuel so it doesn't go into the engine. Okay, that stopped the uh, fuel from dumping in, but I need to blow that out and just let it you know, evaporate for a while. Got to take the carb top off and figure out why it's not regulating the float level on this side. Everything looks right here on the adjustment mechanism. Nothing's missing. So I'm going to go and put the float back in, replace it with an older needle and seat, which is supposedly a good one, and try again. See how that raises and lowers the float level? That alters where it shuts the fuel off and then it will display a different level here on the gauge. Also affects the level inside the bowl down there. You can see there's a little bit of fuel in there. 
Basically, the port at which the fuel dumps into the carburetor through the mains is at this height right here. It's uh, probably about, I don't know, right, right about there where my finger is. So you want the fuel level to be lower than the part where fuel just dumps in the carburetor. You want that lower at all times, but obviously you need a little bit of fuel in there as reserve. So when you want to accelerate, you have enough gas to go. The needle and seat are in this jar and it's in the ultrasonic cleaner, getting a thorough cleaning on the, the needle and seat. So this is actually gasoline inside here, which is, it's actually a mixture of gasoline and diesel, but it's um, sometimes used to clean small parts. You just gotta be really careful because obviously it's flammable. The one I took out of there was this one. It's not marked Solex. It's like a generic um, one from like a rebuild kit or something. This one that I found and put in, this is a, a genuine Solex part and it's marked Solex 1.75, I think, or 175. So let's give this one a try. This is better quality. It actually has a little ball spring on the end too. I think it's gonna work better. The good news is this is now fixed. The float level is stable. I got a little bit of leak right there. I'll fix that later. Okay, I got that side where I want it. Now when I undo this, all the gas is gonna pour out. So you gotta be able to catch it with a rag or something. Uh, you drop all the fuel out of the fuel bowl, it's gonna come out the main jet. That's where this gauge goes in. Pretty light pressure on that. You don't want to over tighten all this stuff. Okay, it's finally time to adjust the carbs. I got it running pretty well. Right now it's at about 925 RPM and I'm checking it with the synchrometer. This side is about four. This side's about four as well. So four. This reads four, four and a half, four. This side here is also four and four. So the synchrometer is reading everything the same and I got the disc, these are disconnected. So then the idle mixtures, I'm looking at this meter to see when the RPM drops. So right now the idle's at like 950. If I turn this a half a turn in, it might change. See how it dropped a lot? Take it out. Comes back to 925, turn it in. And it just dropped to like 875. So I'm only turning about a quarter of a turn. That's the best idle right there. Do the same thing on number one. It just dropped another almost 100 RPM. So I back it out, quarter turn. That's the best idle right there. Right back at 900. Same thing on this one. Quarter turn. Drops it like 50. Go back a quarter turn. Give it some time to adjust. Number three, quarter turn. 
and then it kills the engine. So go back a quarter turn, and it's fine. If I open it a quarter turn, it'll also lower it. But only by about 25, 20, 25 RPM. So back a quarter turn, that's the best idle. Open it. I lose a little bit of idle. Put it back. And it's idling the best right there. Then I can do eight turns. So that's about as close as I can get it. Eighth turn. It didn't drop, so I'm gonna leave it. Eighth turn. Same thing, it didn't drop. This one dropped just a little bit. Put it back. Eighth turn. It didn't drop, so I'm gonna leave it. Then I come back around and I do it all again. Eighth turn. A little bit of a drop, I'm gonna put it back. Eighth turn. Big drop, put it back. Come back to this one. Eighth turn. A little bit of a drop, so I put it back. Eighth turn, big drop, put it back. Eighth turn, drops, put it back. Eighth turn, another drop, so put it back. So that's turned in with an eighth inch increment and it's running pretty well. It takes a long time to return back to idle, and that's because of the distributor. These engines are notorious for that, but that's the way it is. It takes time for the mechanical weights to go back in. Fuel pressure is still at 3.2. Perfect. Check with the synchrometer again. Four. 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 The other thing I like to do is I have each of these loose on the distributor cap. So I'm gonna pull one at a time. Big drop. Pull this one. Even bigger drop. Pull this one. Big drop. Pull this one. Big drop. Number one doesn't drop as much. So we'll check the mixture on number one. Go we'll open a little bit. It's a little bit better idle. Big drop. So the next step will be to connect these linkages and synchronize it at higher RPM. But this is as good as I can get it. So now what I'm gonna do, which is hard to do on the test stand, is to set the synchronization of the carburetors with it off idle. And the best thing to do for that is I have this little tool here that fits over the gas pedal and it's gonna hold the gas pedal open real steady. I can shim this side. I'm gonna open up the throttle so it'll run at about 2,500 RPM, basically just off idle, simulating like a, pretty much like a light cruise, maybe slight freeway uh, speeds. And that allows you to adjust the linkage between the left right carburetors and dial it in so they're both gulping the same amount of air. 
Uh, synchronization is very important because the Porsche engine, it's almost like four separate little engines. Uh, the cylinders are separate, the intake tubes are separate, the carburetor barrels are separate, and if you don't have them synchronized, the engine will fight itself and it won't be smooth and it won't develop its maximum power. And just a couple things to note on these carburetors. Number one, these are the 912 filter tops and I only have them on here because my synchrometer fits really well on top. This is called the synchrometer and it fits right into the opening on the filter tops. And this is the device that sort of measures how much airflow is going through each barrel. The butterfly, which is attached to the shaft, is resting against the stop. That's how you synchronize it at idle. But at maximum speed or at freeway speeds, when this thing opens, you're no longer resting on this screw. This adjustment becomes irrelevant. That's when this adjustment comes into play because this has to be synchronized with the other side. Otherwise, the carburetors aren't going to open at the same time and it's not going to run well down the road. Just going to let it warm up a little bit more. I just drove the car around the block, but I'm going to put some more uh, temperature in it just so we can make sure everything's stable with, this, with the linkages. Yeah, the engine's nice and warm. Just want to show you this thing again. So this thing is running at about four. This side is a little bit less than four, but close. Four, four. The cylinder is just a little bit less airflow, but they're all pretty equal. So now we're gonna put the stick on the gas pedal and rev it up a little bit. So we got that piece of wood holding it open. So that's kind of it for the synchronization procedure. That was about 2,500 RPM, 3,000 RPM. The uh, tachometer is not adjusted in this car. It's out of calibration. It works, but it was previously on a 12 volt car and it's just not calibrated. But I have connected my other analyzer and I know that's about 2,500. So that's just off idle, simulates cruising down the road. You just want every cylinder to gulp the same amount of air. That's the name of the game. If the valves aren't adjusted, it's gonna gulp different amounts of air based on how long that valve is open or how big the gap is. So it's important you do the valves before you do the synchronization. As with anything else, the carburetors are always last. You always wanna do the carburetors last. The only other thing I'll say about synchronization is that the linkage has to be in tip top condition. If you can touch the throttle shaft and push it up and down and it changes the idle or changes the way the engine runs, then something's worn out in the carburetor shafts. Same thing with all the linkage balls. If you can, if you can slide them up and down, you can feel play in them, then that's going to make it impossible to do synchronization with any level of accuracy. Sometimes the bar that goes across the back of the fan shroud Sometimes the way it attaches to the fan shroud, those can move around too. All that will make it almost impossible to tune your engine. So you have to have every component in tip top shape if you want it to run great. And, and that's what I'm after, I'm after great. One thing I wanna do is connect my gauge, the air fuel ratio gauge to the car. I had done that with Mac and it's really instrumental in 
being able to see what's happening to the engine as you're driving it. So the float levels are gonna affect the mixture, everything affects the mixture. And if you're having any kind of hesitation or flat spots, sometimes the air fuel ratio gauge can tell you which way to make an adjustment or what might be wrong. So I'm gonna make a little test pipe that allows me to take the dual exhausts and kind of convert it into a single exhaust and attach my O2 sensor to the back of the muffler. That's gonna let me uh, measure the airflow ratio as I drive. Just cleared it out a little bit, and now it's kind of reset at the 13. Second gear, it's about 12.2. It runs good. Right now we're idling at 13.3, 13.2. Just want to find a stretch of road that I can keep it in gear and just let it ride. Second gear, 13.4. Yeah, it goes lean in second gear. So the minute we get out of the uh, idle circuit, it does run pretty lean. There we are at idle again. The idle's nice and steady. It's a little bit on the low side, but 12 and a half, 13. But when I give it too much gas, it does start to go lean. That's on the main circuits. You just can't give it too much gas. It drives great at quarter throttle. Anything over that, it starts to fall flat. It was really helpful to be able to see what the engine wants as you drive it. And I could tell it was a little bit sluggish after you get on the gas. And sure enough, the meter shows it going very lean. Uh, right after it gets off of the idle circuit, it just starts to get a little bit leaner. As Soon as it gets to like 17, 17 and a half, you really feel the car start to surge. And it'll do that all the way, you know, past 4,000, you know, 5,000 RPM. It's just kind of wanting more fuel. So it could very well be that the, one of the main jets is clogged. So I think I'm gonna remove the main jets, see if I can find something that got clogged. Given that it's new fuel lines, new everything, there could be a piece of rubber, maybe something got stuck in there. Or it could be that they're just too small. Uh, 125 is pretty small. Like I said, it's a bigger displacement engine. It also has a camshaft, so it might need 127s, 130s, but it seems really lean. So I'm thinking it might have a block jet, Pulling the main jets out of the Solexes is a little different than the Webers. Webers, they come right out the top, but on the Solexes, they come out the side. And that means all the fuel dumps out when you take them out. So I'm going to shut the fuel off at the tank, the fuel petcock, and just let it run until it dies. That way there, there's a little bit less fuel to spill all over the uh, nicely painted interior of the engine bay there. I let the engine cool down too, uh, so if any fuel drips out, it doesn't go on the exhaust. But uh, here's the number one 
main jet and it's clear. If you position it so the light goes through these holes, you can see right to the back of the jet. And then I also use a, a wooden toothpick and I just carefully, you know, make sure it's clear. And uh, it's, this jet's not blocked. I'm gonna go check the other jets and make sure they're open, but uh, it's not a problem on the right side. I, I've had all the jets out, cleaned them and put them back in, took it for a drive. Uh, I didn't bring the camera that time, but I get the exact same uh, lean condition after it goes to the main jets, about somewhere between a quarter throttle, half throttle. It really runs out of fuel and uh, looks like it's gonna need a jet change, um, air corrector jets possibly or both. It also could be the fuel level, the float level, but I've checked it with the gauge. It's at the bottom of the line. It wouldn't be that off. Um, it does affect the mixture, especially when the mixture kicks in um, because it, it basically, I did a video on this on the Weber's, but the emulsion tube and the way the fuel gets drawn up into the well of the emulsion tube, the lower the fuel level, the harder it is for it to draw the fuel up. So it makes it leaner, it actually delays when the main jets kick in as well. But I know my fuel levels or float levels are very close to the, the minimum. Um, I could raise them up a little bit, but I still think it's gonna run lean. And I don't want it to you know, bubble over into the auxiliaries anyway. So I, I'm pretty happy with the float level. I think it just needs a jet change. If you guys have um, a jet recommendation, just let me know. I'm thinking at least 130s and probably going to a smaller air corrector too. Let me know what you think. I'm sure someone's gonna say you shouldn't drive it with the air cleaners off. So go ahead and leave that comment down there too. I won't be surprised, but uh, thanks again for watching. Hopefully this uh, gives you some insight into how I just keep learning about the engine, listening to the engine and seeing what I think it needs as opposed to just copycat. I don't like to copycat other people's uh, engine data. I like to, to tailor it to my car, to my driving style and my climate. So we'll get it right, just need some more parts. Thank you, see you next week.